Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, and uh, let me just uh, say, my name is Eddie O'Connor, and I've been a sinner. Uh, I confess to having run um, power stations, fa uh, fires of fossil fuels, um, <laughs> and when I worked with Ireland's uh, power utility. We burnt uh, coal, oil, and gas, and, and I also finished up as the purchasing manager there, and we bought that, uh, those fuels from around the world. Um, I also confess to having uh, been Chief Executive Officer of Board Moda in Ireland. Uh, Board de Moda is a turf board. You don't have much turf here in Argentina, uh, but these, uh, this stuff comes from peatlands. It, it makes uh, electricity very inefficiently, uh, and under my guidance there, uh, we uh, released 10 million tons of CO2 per annum. So when it comes to fossil fuels, ladies and gentlemen, I've been a big sinner, uh, um, but uh, around 1989, a board member, uh, a scientist, said to me, you know, you're polluting the world with all this CO2 stuff. I said, you can't be, because, you know, we breathe this stuff out, so it's not dangerous. They said, well, uh, actually it is. And, and so, <laughs> from, from 1989, I've tried to do something about this. Now, as, as, as you said, uh, Chairman, I'm a chemical engineer, and, and so I'm supposed to know something about chemistry. And, and I have to accept the scientific evidence, which was actually first of all formulated by an Irishman called John Tyndall uh, in the Royal Institution in London uh, in 1861 when he had caused uh, a past radiation through a series of gases and found that the radiation was absorbed by CO2 and by CH4, methane, and, and by water vapor but pass through oxygen and nitrogen. So the evidence is all there, um, so what do you do about this? Um, so I'm more or less dedicated my commercial and my, uh, and my personal life to try to ameliorate this uh, since, since that time. And one of the first things that we did was to uh, build uh, Ireland's first wind farm in 1992. Um, we, uh, we built it, in, it was very small, tiny turbines, uh, but nevertheless, 24 years later, it's still there. All the capital cost is paid off. The fuel is free. Um, and, and it's making a contribution of 6.4 megawatts. Uh, just as a matter of interest, the size of each turbine was one quarter of a megawatt. Uh, recently, in, in, in Chile, we bought uh, uh, turbines of 3.4 megawatts, so a factor of 14 larger. So in that 24 years, we've got that much bigger and, of course, that much cheaper and, and much more reliable. And all around the world, men and, and women of vision have created a global industry uh, that's now supplying very large amounts uh, of power while abating the production of greenhouse gases. In fact, uh, in the last quarter, I think, we were by far the biggest uh, contributor of new uh, generation assets uh, to the world, that is wind and solar. In, from every country from China uh, to the United States. We are, ladies and gentlemen, on this once-off transition to sustainability, and this industry is helping to create that future. Today, the wind sector and the solar PV sector are delivering electricity in markets as diverse as Chile and Morocco and Mexico, uh, South Africa and the United States, um, for significantly less cost uh, than that of coal, uh, gas or diesel, and most emphatically nuclear power. Uh, just to give you a, a feel for this, in, in South Africa, in the last round there, we bid um, uh, 0.6 of a rand. And, and I think the rand and, and the peso are now running identically. They're, they're, they're the same value, maybe not the same purchasing power, but exactly the same value in relation to the euro. Uh, and so, new coal-fired plant in South Africa is 1 rand 29, and we bid 0.6, and we won uh, 240 megawatts by bidding that. So you can see we come in at less than half the price. Wind energy in South Africa comes in at less than half the price of new coal-fired plant. Um, and so, so what's necessary uh, for us uh, to build uh, a wind sector? And I think you need three elements for that. Firstly, you need a resource. Now, while the wind is always blowing somewhere in, in, in the world and somewhere in every country, uh, Argentina is blessed with, uh, as far as I can see, uh, at a distance so far, uh, maybe the, the best on land wind resource in the world with capacity factors that might reach 50 or even 55 percent. Uh, and it's, it's regular and it's reliable. Uh, second, you need an open and transparent market. Uh, South Africa, the United States and Chile are all very different countries, very different political systems. 
uh, but they have built vibrant renewable energy uh, industries. And why? Because they've established regulatory processes that are open, transparent and inclusive. And so they have attracted investment from all around the world and built significant um, additional electricity assets uh, for some, as I said, of the lowest prices that can be built. Um, and a very interesting fact, in 2014, 85% uh, of all the investment, all the foreign direct investment that went into South Africa came into the, uh, the renewable energy sector. I think that's massively significant. 85% of all FDI uh, into South Africa came into our sector. And the third thing that's necessary is a commitment to a long-term program uh, with clear targets to achieve and uh, uh, delighted to see that this has actually happened uh, in Argentina. Uh, while an open and transparent regulatory process will attract international interest, a long-term program with a clear target will motivate the supply chain to invest in building local content. The United States, Brazil and Germany have built globally significant manufacturing industries servicing the wind industry sector across the globe because they have long-term programs which incentivize manufacturing. Uh, renewable energy provides low-cost electricity which is reliable, efficient and safe. Transparent and open procurement processes will attract international interest, ingenuity and investment. And a long-term commitment to delivery will bring a supply chain with manufacturing and ancillary services. Taken together, a well-run renewables program will bring very significant economic and social benefits uh, for the country that has created it. Now take South Africa. Uh, it has now run five open uh, and competitive procurement rounds for renewable energy. Wind energy is being delivered onto the system uh, at a third uh, of the projected price of new uh, coal plant. Some 2,000 megawatts uh, of new clean generation assets have been built on time, on budget, and without exposing the country to fuel risk. When you put up a wind farm, it's, it's going to be around when my, when my grandchildren are the same age as I am, uh, and you're never going to pay for the fuel. If somebody asks you how much is gas going to be in five years' time, well, you know, if they tell you, you have to say, hey man, you have to be wrong, uh, or woman. Uh, <coughs> when they say how much is wind going to be in five years' time, well, you know precisely what it is. It's free. And all you have to think about is the capital cost. Because a wind farm can be built quickly and this is massively significant when you compare it with either coal or new nuclear, um, it, it takes about 12 months uh, or 18 months, or if you're in Texas, about six months um, uh, to build uh, one, uh, a wind farm. Um, I, you, you see uh, in South Africa a massive contribution to that country's economics in 2014 and 2015 because of the wind and solar that was built there. Uh, the additional generation had two distinct benefits. First, it displaced much more expensive peaking diesel uh, and coal generation, saving the country uh, 3.6 billion rand in the first six months of 2015. And as I said, the rand and the peso are about the same. Second, over this period, it avoided over 200 hours of unserved demand. This is forced load shedding, uh, saving the country up to an additional 4.6 billion rand uh, in macroeconomic benefits associated with not having uh, to shed load and force customers to stop producing and stop buying. These are very significant benefits. So what are the lessons that we might draw from these international examples for Argentina? You've clearly stated that the country needs new power generation, uh, 35,000 and 36,000 megawatts of very aging plants uh, needs to get augmented and actually a lot of it replaced. You've also stated that the country uh, has additional social and economic priorities and to meet these needs to grow the economy not just this year but over the next decade. You want to attract international investment into this new infrastructure. Now Argentina is now open for business and wants to rebuild uh, its investment networks across the globe. And these are laudable goals which we empathize with completely. Uh, they are shared by uh, countries across the world and in fact of course Argentina will now be competing for this foreign direct investment uh, with every other country, uh, particularly in emerging markets, uh, who want to build literally millions of megawatts. At a time of global secular stagnation, uh, which is affecting the developed world, investors are looking for new markets in which to invest. You have an opportunity to build a new power sector here that is smart, secure and sustainable, fit for the challenges of the 21st century. 
But there are lessons from other countries which have succeeded uh, and from countries which have failed to develop this new uh, sustainable power sector. The investment proposition, the energy programme must be open, it must be transparent and it must be long term as I've said. And take a leaf out of South Africa's book. Their renewable procurement programme has many merits and Argentina would not go wrong if it emulated a lot of what's done uh, and almost everything that's done in the renewable sector in South Africa. I'll be honest with you, I was concerned about uh, transparency, about corruption, uh, when we went into South Africa in the beginning. I was concerned about political and social stability. But I can tell you that there are a few countries in the world which have designed as robust a system uh, for energy procurement as South Africa. And it's brought on one gigawatt of uh, new renewable power a year at a price significantly, as I said, less uh, than the alternative from fossils. And by the way, we're not including uh, a carbon price in any of these comparative figures that we give. And one thing that's for certain in the future, uh, as, as this world chokes itself to death if we don't ameliorate this CO2, there will be carbon fines. So it behoves us, uh, at, for, as an additional reason, uh, for building uh, new renewable energy. If medals were to be awarded for the, uh, for the Renewables Olympics, uh, South Africa would be on the winner's podium. And there are two additional elements to South Africa's program that I would commend. I would commend to Argentina strongly. First, an independent power procurement office which runs the program. Uh, it is attached to the national treasury and staffed by some of the brightest minds in government. Uh, it is fiercely independent and it's trusted by all of us players in the in this sector. <coughs> Second, an independent regulator which stands up to incumbents and to whom new generators can appeal. National electricity sectors are often run by parastatal uh, incumbents, owning both generation and supply assets. They have the power to squeeze new market entrants out of the market. A robust and independent regulator can and will make them play by the rules, and they have that in South Africa. <coughs> I've talked already about the speed of deployment of renewables and their pricing. And if you want to build new renewable power plant that will generate without fuel risk, without carbon fines, then wind and solar uh, energy will deliver that for you. If you want to build a new supply chain, fostering entrepreneurial activity and developing industry, then a long-term commitment to renewable energy will deliver that for you. For instance, in Germany, for every megawatt of, of wind and solar that are installed, there are eight people employed in the industry. Now, that's available to do here. Nobody has built, a, well, Brazil has started it, but all the other countries of Latin America uh, have not really got going on this yet. So there's an opportunity here for Argentina uh, should it follow the rules that, that I've, been, I've been outlining uh, in the past. If you want to invest across other sectors of your economy while bringing new power generation onto the grid quickly, meeting on serve demand, then renewable energy will deliver that for you. Now, I can't promise a new Jerusalem or even new society, but if Argentina commits to an open, transparent and long-term program to procure renewable energy <coughs> with robust and independent actors to run it while attracting in uh, large amounts of, of new renewable investment or new, new you know, world global uh, foreign direct investment, the fact is there's some 70 trillion uh, dollars of money looking for a home in the world. But you know, the, you know what it's going to do? It's going to say, well, can I invest it and be sure that some local incumbent isn't going to come along and, and be able to intervene and destroy uh, this? That is going that if I invest here and I promise that I'm going to get paid for 20 years, well, then that must exactly happen. And if that happens, there's a huge amount out there that actually needs a home because we've got secular stagnation in a lot of the West now, and we need to find new markets to invest in. My country, Ireland, has a long and notable history of engagement with Argentina. Uh, this week's ministerial bilateral uh, marks another chapter in that story. And I would wish uh, that my company, Mainstream, uh, would play our part in helping Argentina to achieve its once-off transition to sustainability by building a renewable sector uh, which will power that future. And if you adopt international rules and commit to an open and long-term program, then the world will respond and investors from Ireland and across the globe will help you to build the generation that will underpin the development of a new Argentina in this new century. Thank you very much.